this is Lizzie Giggs getting ready to show you how to make several quick, easy, and beautiful cards for the winter season. A friend of mine recommended that I get all the measurements up at the beginning of the video. So get all your cuts done and let's make these cards together. If you don't already own these stamps, go to www.stampscapes.com and you can purchase them mounted or unmounted and you will find many videos done by the owner himself as well as a huge gallery of other people's work where they've made cards, pictures, designs. You can get lost in that website. Go check it out. Usually when Christmas is coming we're thinking how can I make several cards that are going to look great and they're going to be handmade and show that they were made with loving care and send them to your friends without killing yourself for an hour in each one. So that's the purpose of this tutorial. How can I make a bunch of great looking handmade cards and make several in one or two hours instead of just a very few, like three or four in one or two hours. So here our stamping surface is only an inch high and five and one eighth inch wide and that's a very small stamping surface, something that you could do really quickly and several times in an assembly line fashion all at once. Then all you have to do after that is put all your little bits together very quickly like this and you're all set. I'm looking at some of the paper products I'm using here. I've got several Christmas papers that are fairly subdued right here. Some of, them, some of them look really good on the back and some don't. So you kind of have to pick something that isn't going to compete with this piece of artwork up here. You want something that's going to be attractive but it's going to complement this and won't leave you staring at this instead of admiring this. Here's a background glitter cardstock that I used called Onx. It's right here underneath each of my papers. So that means I just have to cut a bunch of these and I don't have to worry about any other background. It's going to suit anything that I do no matter what I pick for my pattern paper. So let's take a look at how many cuts you're going to get out of everything. Chances are if you're trying to use up some of your Christmas paper you may only have one or two left from whatever project you got them for in the first place or you just love them in the store so much you bought a couple. So let's see if we can use up some of those. If we're taking this pattern paper right here, you can cut eight pieces of this shape out of this. And then the glitter paper, since it's a little bigger, you're only going to get six. But that's okay. Let's say you're going to do 16 cards all together. So you'll need two pattern papers and three of these glitter papers and then you're going to take a glossy sheet of cardstock that's eight and a half by eleven and you're going to cut sixteen of these out of the one sheet so by the time you've used three glitter papers two of these pattern papers and one eight and a half by eleven you should be able to get sixteen Christmas cards done very quickly this is only one inch by five and one eighth inch. Before I forget, I wanted to show you the inside of this card. We have that same glitter stock underneath there and that's cut at four by five and a quarter and then we have this piece here which is cut at three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. I've stamped a tree inside. I've also taken my two inks that I've been using, the latte and the denim, and just kind of edged out this card with my Timmy. So it's ready to go to write a note. But let's take a look at the top here. If I wanted to make my note bigger, I could repeat this and I could just put this up here anyway. But this is a great place to put a gift card. Starbucks, P.F. Chang, whatever you know suits the person you're sending this card to. That way, if you give them this handmade card, you put a gift certificate in here, you've actually completed one person off of your shopping list. Especially if you've got, you know, 20 of these that you need to send out. You could have $10 spent on your gift card. You've probably used a um, dollar's worth of cardstock and ink, let's say. So then you've spent $11 
and whatever the postage is to get this to your friend in the winter season. This is a flat card except for this. My recommendation is instead of putting this into the envelope so that this is facing the postage side, flip it over instead and put it into your card, into your envelope this way so that you have a flat surface where your address, your return address and your address are going to be and your stamp is going to be and there's a better chance of the post office not having as much problem getting caught on something like this. I think this is still a fairly masculine card but let's say you don't want to have this bow here. You could put uh, an old coin an old navy button, military button here, um, something that is not quite as high as this knot and isn't quite as feminine as this bow. If you don't have anything like that and you are worried about how it's going to go through the postage, use something like this instead. You could put this here. You'd want to put a glue dot under there, put it down, and a glue dot under this fold and put it down. And then use something like a candy button or any other of those um, candy peel away stickers that are easy to use and take something like this size and put it right here. That would finish off this card beautifully. We've got a kind of a silver glitter here so perhaps this. I think either of those would work. I bet you have three or four packages like that or one of those little sacks full of uh, kind of candy pieces that you could easily put here. Then you won't have to worry about this going through the mail at all. I have my glossy paper ready to go. I have 16 of these. Here are the two colors that I'm going to use on it. And once I show you how to do one of these, you can go and do your other 15 right away. And then we can put these colors away and not have to bring them out again. Then when we're ready to do the next application to this, again, you can do them all at once and get them finished. Let's do 16 of one color. I've got my Tim Holtz alcohol ink applicator again with a felt cover on it and we're just going to call it a Timmy and we're going to use this quickly and easily making sure that we're, we've got our felt tip right over the top of the Velcro here so that we don't use something that is showing a little bit of Velcro and scratch up our stamping surface. Here we are, we're ready. Get your denim out. And we're going to ink up about half of this, maybe just a little bit more. We want a lot of blue surface to show so that we can put snowflakes all over it. Here we have changes in color. This is going to saturate at some point. That's what's making it even easier. I can add more ink to this and never worry that one side is going to be darker than the other. I see something that isn't quite as dark as one side and I just go in spread it around. This will blend out nicely with our second color. Go ahead and do the other 15 of these. Put my ink away. I'm going to turn it around now. Take my cover, put it on the other side these always seem to be exactly the wrong size unless you cut your own so I'm just showing you how to protect yourself and not scratch anything. I've got my latte color here and I'm just going to in assembly style fashion I'm just going to go ahead and do all 16 of these right away with my latte. The latte is a very quiet color. You can see um, swishes of excess ink here which tells me that this side is already saturated with ink. No matter what I do now, I can add ink as much as I like. This color will never change. And that's an assurance for you because um, once it's done, it's done. You don't have to worry that you have to fuss too much. You can go ahead and do the other 15 of these and we'll move on to the next step. I have four out of my 16 all set for the next step. I'm about to use a tool that I bought because it looked cool. I was at the cash register. I thought, that is really neat. I want one. And at the time, I had no idea what I would use it for. I've learned a lot since then. I've seen a lot of people use them for different reasons. What we're going to do is we're going to use this cool mini mister with water on these cards. It sprays very fine. And uh, as long as you're about 
I think, a foot away or even less, and you're going across in a sweep and across in a sweep, that should be enough to have all of these cards done in two sweeps of spray. Okay, so I'm ready. Got my sprayer. I'm going to spritz over to the side a couple of times, and then while I'm in the spritzing mode, I'm just going to spritz across. Okay, it wasn't two. I did four. You know, a little bit more on the top. Okay, now what's going to happen is, let's take a look. That water is going to puddle the pigment ink off to the side, and it's going to bring up the original white color of the paper from underneath. It's working very quickly and will be dry probably in about one minute. That's because the spray is so very fine. It's an extremely handy tool. Let's take a look while that's dry at the mega card with all my toppers on it. Here's a picture of what it looks like before I added snow falling. This is like snow falling way off in the distance. It's got more of a dreamy look and is soft and out there with the glow of some light on the bottom. Once I add my snow to it, I still have those background snowflakes way out there. So this gives a great kind of 3D visual to these toppers. Let's take a look at our toppers that are drying here. Yeah, those are pretty much dry. I see one little piece that could stand a little bit more time. These two are definitely dry. This one might take a little bit more. Okay, so what? One more minute and they're set. Take them off carefully or just kind of tip your little workspace and let them slide off. Get your next four on there, spray those, tip them off, then your next four, tip them off. And by the time you've done that, your first four are already ready to stamp. Assemble the stamps that we're going to use today on those toppers. This is from a set of stamps that are one of my all-time favorites, Stampscapes. I'll make sure that you have the website. I think I have it right at the beginning when I give you a list of what all of these are called. You can go directly to the Stampscapes website and order these for yourself on the block or without the block and just with the rubber that's here. These are very detailed stamps some, sometimes. Uh, if you notice on the back of this one, we have a lot of rubber here. I'm only pointing this out because um, when I clean these, I use a wet wipe and I make sure I get all my ink off and I get it ready to go for the next person or for my next project. But uh, chances are you're going to have a lot of debris from the wet wipe on here. So I wanted to show you a trick that, oh, you can even see it. There it is right there. Maybe I'll clean this off for you right now. Um, I was doing a Stampscapes getaway on the weekend where we just make a bunch of Stampscapes cards. And we were talking to each other of, about how there must be a wet, better way to get all of this debris off quickly. And somebody came up with the idea of a toothbrush. So let me put this aside. Don't do this right over your artwork because then you're going to forget about all the debris and stamp right onto it. So that works very well. My debris is off and it's ready to go for the next person. Because our stamping service is pretty small, we can get our assembly line going and get several things done at once, one after the other. I have my first set of stamps ready to go. I'm going to point out the one I'm going to do. I want to show this is my big, huge card. This is the one we're doing right here. And I'm going to work on this little moon right away. And you'll see this is so easy that if you just want to do six of them right off the bat, you could do them one after the other. It would be very easy. I have inked my ink pad so that it's nice and wet and ready to use. I'm using Distress Ink Black Soot. You can use any dye ink that you like. I just happen to like this one. And now I've got my Stampscape stamp ready to use. But let me show you something first. Here's the back. This is a rectangle. It has a bunch of dots all the way around it so that it can be integrated into a number of other stamps that were created by Stampscapes easily because a lot of them have dots around them so they integrate well. See this right here? You can see some of it right here. You can see some of it right here. And this goes with a whole bunch of other designs 
to meld in very nicely. And I'm constantly getting rid of the dots around this. And sometimes I think maybe I should cut the moon right out of this, but I, it seems like sacrilege. I don't know. I just can't do it. Plus, the randomness of what we're going to do right now may not work if I had a hard line of cutting around this moon. So I'm not going to do it, but I am going to ink it up really well. And I'm going to show you a solution to that problem. Here's a wet wipe and I'm going to pat off the ink on the outside and try not to think about it too much. You really do want it not to be too perfect. It should look better if it was somewhat randomized. So you can see I'm trying not to care too much. Of course we all care about it, but trust me if you've done a lot of stamping with the stamp you tend to forget about it after all. And after all we're only going to use just a little bit over half of this stamp. So let me stamp it. And let's see what happens. Okay, awesome, right? Didn't get a bunch of dots. I'll put that aside. Now I'm going to take this stamp and I'm going to use just a portion of it. So it looks like the moon is nestled within the trees. I don't mind if my trees go over my moon. There, all set. Then, hmm, I think it would be really nice if I had a little bit of small trees on the bottom there. There we go. Okay, then I have a nice little moose to add. Here's the thing with this moose. He's got a little platform right here. Same thing. If you stamp this in such a way that the moose is hanging out in the middle of the sky with his own little platform that's going to look really silly. So you want to make sure he's very much on the ground. So you're going to have to look under the stamp as you stamp and make sure that the base of that stamp is at the bottom of your paper. There you go. Not too bad. There he is, hanging in space, okay? But we're going to do something about that. All right, so that's all set. Then I'm going to add some trees over here again using that same stamp that we started out with, making sure that I have plenty of ink. Okay, awesome, that looks great. Now, I need to do something about this right here. So see the bottom of the stamp? It has all those little dots that are going to be used like grass. I'll ink it up and stamp them. How far in does this go? It goes in about a quarter of an inch on the wood. So that means when I'm stamping I'm going to keep in mind just how far in that goes. There we go. There. That didn't work. There we go. All set. All right. I don't really like that. What shall I do? I don't really like that this is hanging out in outer space like this. So I'm going to take a micro tip and just fill this in just a little bit to make it look as though that was supposed to look like that. Okay, it's done, it's all set, it's finished, it was easy. Make six, make 12 if that's your favorite one. On this one, I managed to get the antlers right into the moon and I thought that was very attractive, but the silhouette is very attractive as well. I'm already ready for my second card topper right here. This is even easier than the first. I only have two stamps, this one and this one. I've got my blue ready to go. And I'm going to use this tree right here. I guess it's not a tree. I guess it's a branch. And I'm going to come across my page like this as though 
I'm just coming over the top of a hill and I'm looking down into the valley. Uh, maybe a little bit here. Some in the corner. A little more in the corner. That didn't work out. Let's do it again. There we go. Uh, you always have to watch when you have a wood mounted stamp. You've always got about a quarter of an inch all the way around. And so sometimes when I stamp, I don't take that into account. It might be nice to have something up here, but I like the way it looks. Don't really want to take a chance screwing up, so I'm not going to stamp again. And here are my geese. And this is a very small piece of rubber underneath. So what we're going to do is we're going to kiss the stamp onto the piece of paper. And what that means is you're not going to kiss really hard and mash your teeth and your lips together and you're not going to go so lightly that you can't tell that you're kissing. It's going to be the perfect kiss and you're going to put your geese exactly where you want it. Push down, kiss, and there you go. That was easy. That was even simpler than the first one. You could sit here and do your little assembly line and just do a bunch of those very easily. I'm going to put that aside, except I see a little something here that I want to correct. And I normally probably wouldn't, except maybe you would just like to try this yourself if it happens to you. So my branch hadn't sta stamped down entirely, so I used my little black micro tip to fill it in a little bit. Okay, here's my last topper right here. This is very easy as well. And I'm going to show you this stamp right here, which has its very own set of trees. Again, you've got a little piece of grass that's sitting on it. And if you're not careful and you stamp it way up here, it's going to float in the sky on its own little grassy platform and look a little bit silly. So we want to make sure that doesn't happen. Our next stamp doesn't look like something that belongs with any of this, but I picked it because it has all this wonderful grass on top and I'm only going to use this little part right here. Again, you've got to watch it. There's a quarter of inch of wood there that needs to be taken into account when you're trying to have a little bit of precision about how close you're getting to the other parts of your stamp. So we're going to use that and then just one tree. Let's take a look at our card. These are the trees that came with this stamp. This is this stamp right here. And this stamp is also responsible for that and that. Why use a bunch of different tree stamps when you can just use one? I'm going to do my little church in the wildwood first. I'm going to do it, you know, right about here. Put it more towards the right. That worked out great by accident, of course. I'm going to go ahead and do my tree. And because I'm probably going to use the tops of the trees over here, why don't we see if we can get an image of the tree trunk on this side? Maybe have some of it stamped right off the page. There we go. So we can definitely see the tree trunk there. Now we do have some floating going on. This worked out okay, but this trunk has no grass and nowhere to seat itself. And this side could probably use with a little bit of something too. So I'm going to take this interesting looking stamp right here, just use the top, take into account that I've got some wood block in the way and stamp right into the tree. There we go, that worked out okay. And I think what I'll do is I'll stamp a little bit off to the side here, make it look like I have a grassy knoll. There we go. Maybe a little bit more to cover up that little hole that was there. And look, I put some black ink over here. Let's see if we can rescue that. Get my wet wipe. Keeping in mind that my background is also 
water-based. I'm just going to make a little point here, and while it's still a little bit wet, see if I can get some of that off. There we go. It's not all the way off, but it's mostly off. Okay, and now I'm starting to get black fingers, which makes a person wonder why they did their nails. Okay, so that's done. And now I'm going to put a little bit more tree action over here. Just a little guy. And just a little more. Oh, it almost looks a little too uniform, doesn't it? Hmm. Without stamping again, I think I'm going to see if I can fill in that tiny little gap. Maybe tilt it a little bit so I only get the top of the tree. There. Much better. Okay, that's done. It wasn't hard. Do like six or twelve of those. And they'll be so easy to put together. And your cards will be done ridiculously fast. My three toppers are ready to go. Wasn't hard. I hope you agree. And I hope you try this because it's fun and it's very fast. I'm going to take a little look at my oversized little demonstration card here. I want to show you the snowflakes that I added to this. So here are my three samples. And I want to show you some options for putting your snowflakes on. This is a great white pen. I bet you all have one of these, the Uniball Signo. Let me just show you on some black paper. You'd have to make tiny little circles and you'd have to make sure that your ball got rolled every once in a while to pick up some white ink because you couldn't just tap it and get a good amount of ink going on there. So this is a great tool, but maybe not the best choice. Let's put that aside. Here is the Jelly Roll white pen. You can just see it there. This is also a wonderful pen. This will give us a little bit of texture. It'll actually raise up just a little bit. This makes perfect little snowflakes. It works really, really well. You don't even have to get it rolling. You can just give it a little jiggle here and there. If you don't have a white pen and you're not happy with the way it's running, sometimes they don't, they get a little gummed up or for some reason they just don't want to work that day, then get something like this. You might even have this. This is, I'm just going to turn it carefully to the side, this is Copic Opaque White. And I've got my little embossing tool here and I'm going to take this little nip right here. Let's, I've got some in the lid. I'm going to touch it and I'm going to very quickly put my little snowflakes everywhere. This is a great way to do this. If you don't have this, go get some white nail polish from your local uh, pharmacy store and put a blob in a lid, stick your embossing tool there, and go for it. I was just assembling our cards and I realized I had left out a very important step. Let me show you the finished card. And after I put the snow on, I had added tiny little red winter berries to these branches, which sets it off and finishes this out nicely. I'm calling them winter berries. Uh, let's just pretend that's what that is. So what I'll have to do is go back to my mega card right here, where I don't have any of the berries on it, and I'll show you what I did. I've got my liquid pearls upside down a little container so that all the paint is up at the top. It's ruby red. I'm going to take a little post-it note and make sure that my paint is running before I use it and I feel comfortable about how fast it's going to come out. So I get it going and then I apply a little pressure but then I just do tiny little dots like so. And then when you feel really comfortable about this, get rid of that. Go over to your branches and start applying it randomly everywhere you want all over the place. There's, uh oh, see, look at, I made a boo boo right there. Let me show you how to get it off. Very fortuitous. I'm going to get another one of my handy dandy post it notes. Make sure that it's nice and stiff, and I'm going to scoop that off. Okay? Wipe it off. Scoop again. 
Okay. Get my ruby red going. Make sure it's running really well. It is, and I'm going to touch it on top there. Good. And I'm going to keep going. Until I feel like there's enough all over this. When the cardstock background is red, it looks particularly nice. Let's take a look at my sample card again. I think it makes all the difference in the world. All our cards are assembled. It was easy. It was fast. I have three of my Christmas cards done right here. It didn't take me long. And I could do 20 or 40 just like them and be finished. So good luck, and I hope you enjoyed this video.